So last year, uh, you aired the final episode of the Dr. Phil show after 21 seasons. 21. So, yeah. Yeah. so what have you missed the most about being on during daytime? Well, you know, it's not about a, what I'm missing. It's about what I'm excited about going forward. In daytime, you've got a certain demographic, as you guys know, because a lot of people are at work and... Uh, you guys are such a part of America's uh, fabric that you get taped and people watch you when they get home, and I think they did uh, with us as well. Yeah. But I'm excited to address men and kids that have been in school, and also it's fun to go on late at night. I mean, at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You can say things that Brian doesn't let us say anymore. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I, I've already been getting uh, some warnings about that. <laughs> You can only go so far. So I'm, I'm really excited about going on at a different time so you can talk to, a, you know, men more than just mm -hmm. uh, that aren't on during the day, available during the day. And we're a, like 80% double income society. So a lot of people are working during the day. Yeah. You can talk to them. Of course, you're competing with like primetime shows and stuff. Some of them mine, as I've got some shows on <laughs> CBS, like from Help Me Todd and all that. So when you beat yourself in another project, does it count as a loss? <laughs> I don't know. I hadn't thought about that. That's a uh, high-level high, problem. Yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a high-class problem, so that'll be well, okay. Dr. Phil, you don't shy away from any topics, so we want to bring you in on a hot topic. Now, you've been, you're cel you'll be celebrating 40 years of marriage to wow. your wife, Robin, oh, soon. Yeah. I want, I'd love to hear what you made of our last topic about Basically, no more intimacy or sex in a relationship. Can you get past that? Yeah. Well, is it no more? There was, and then there wasn't? Yes. Ten and years he, of Ten no years. More. Yeah, okay, ten years. And I don't think, according to the question, I don't think there ever was much. Yeah. But now there's no. Look, so it's not a, like they went from hot tamales to cold peach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a symptom, not the problem. Somebody's, like, hugely pissed about something. <laughs> oh. That's a symptom, not the problem, right? Because yeah. if, you, if you're not having any kind of... That's another way of... That's another love language, mm -hmm. right? That's another way of expressing your feelings. And if you've gone 10 years yeah. and not had physical intimacy with your partner, you got bigger issues than just the physical. You, yeah. you were kind of saying that, yeah. right? Yeah. It's much... I mean, you know, that's a... It's a statement. It is. It's a statement. Yeah. I'm not giving you any. It's all locked up. You're never going to see it again. Yeah. And you can't go out and do anything, which, of course, is going to make him go out and do something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yeah. It's yeah. kind of a bait and switch, because you kind of have a deal going in, and yeah. then, all right, I'm going to change it, and but you can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that deal's... That's an uphill battle. That's, yeah. 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 That, I mean... I think people get divorced too quick in America, but 10 yeah. years, that's mm -hmm. not Maybe too, too slow on this yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Dr. Yeah. Phil, you were talking about things you're excited for. In April, you're launching an entire news and entertainment cable TV network yeah. called Merritt Street Media. Now, you've built all new studios on a five-acre campus in Texas. That's going to include a Dr. Phil museum. So tell us about what you've been working on. Well, it, this is a whole new network, and it's five acres under roof, and we're going to have like four hours of news every day. Hmm. And I have a real novel aspect about this news part of it. We're going to tell people the facts and let them make up their own mind about whether it's good news or bad news. Yeah. It's not going to be spin, spin, spin. We're just going to, here's what happened. You decide whether it's good news or bad news. And my show is kind of the anchor in prime time, and I'm going to deal with the things I've always dealt with, real people, talking about real challenges, looking for real solutions. But those have changed to include social issues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Think about when I started, 22, it was in 02, the first text message had never been sent. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Wow. There, the first text message had never, ever been sent. And, and now we have to deal with, uh, at like 08, 09, the smartphone came out. Mm -hmm. Everything changed. And where everyone gets their news from. You, you're, um, just to jump in here, when your network starts, um, you're hosting the primetime show called Dr. Phil Primetime. And for an upcoming episode, my understanding is that you went to the southern border. Now, you're saying that you're going to give people facts. What did you take away from that experience, and what kind of reporting are you going to be bringing back from that experience? I'll tell you a fact I took away. I talked to the head of all the border guards down there, the, the head of the union. I asked him straight up, kids are coming over the border with numbers written on them, phone numbers and addresses. Mm -hmm. Do we check those out? He said, well, we call them. 
is it possible that we're sending them into known prostitution rings or sweatshops? He said, it's not possible, it is absolute. We are using American tax dollars to ship children into known prostitution All and sweatshops. Or some children. Well, who knows? Okay. We don't know. I said, are you? So, what kind of checking do they do? So, they, they call the said, number uh -huh, and, and say, do you know about this child? They say, yes. Will you receive them when they come? Yes. I said, is it possible that that's a prostitution ring? He said, we ha we know enough to know that it in a number of cases it has turned out to be absolute sex ring. It has turned out to be an absolute sweatshop. I said, how is this possible? Well, what do they and he do said, then? it is happening. What do they do then if they know that that's happening? Where is the U.S. Attorney's Office? Where is the... Here's the Damn here's good the question, you have it? to You have to re-ask that question when we come okay. back. Okay. Sonny, you were about to ask. Yeah, and, and I, I don't mean to derail us, but um, you mentioned that there are children crossing the border with numbers and names. Many of them are, those names belong to their family members, but you're saying, and, that, and that's true, but some of them are sex trafficked, some of them are sweatshop trafficked. Why uh, do you think the federal government is not involved? Uh, why isn't the U.S. Attorney's Office involved? Is it a resource it's issue? It's a resource issue. Mm -hmm. And have they reached out to the Biden administration about that? Well, uh, you know, it's, it, it's hard to know. They say that they're so overwhelmed with processing that that's all they can do. They've become social workers and processors mm. and not investigators and border guards because they're just processing, processing, processing. Got it. Well, Dr. Phil, I want to make sure we get to your new book, which yes. is um, We've Got Issues. <clears throat> and a lot, you were f referring to it in the last segment, how much has changed since you first got started in this. And one of the things is social media. Yeah. So you say you're not the only voice in your kids' ears, so you have to be the best voice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Explain that. Well, think about it. In, in like 08, 09, smartphones came on and and kids started, they stopped living their lives and started watching people live their lives. Mm. And so we saw the biggest spike and the highest levels of depression, anxiety, loneliness, and suicidality since records have ever been kept. Mm. And it's just continued on and on and on. And then COVID hits 10 years later, and the same agencies that knew that are the agencies that shut down the schools for two years. Mm. Who does that? Who takes away the support system for these children? Who takes them away and shuts it down? And by the way, when they shut it down, they stopped the mandated reporters from being able to see children that were being abused and sexually molested, and in fact sent them home and abandoned them to their abusers with no way to watch, and referrals dropped 50 to 60 percent. So, there was also a yeah. pandemic yeah, going was, on, they were trying to save kids' lives. They were trying to save so kids' well. lives. Remember, we know a lot of folks who died during this, so it wasn't, people weren't laying uh, around eating children. bond, but well, you know what, we're lucky. Maybe we're lucky they didn't because we kept them out of the, the, the places that they could get, be sick because no one wanted to believe we had an issue. Are you saying no school children died of COVID? I'm saying it was the safest group. They were the less vulnerable group and they suffered and will suffer more from the mismanagement of COVID than they will from the exposure to COVID. And that's not an opinion, that's a fact. Well, Phil, we don't even have time to talk it out now, man. But thanks for coming. The new book is called We've Got Issues and it is out tomorrow.